Wow. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to this wonderful, powerful, and extraordinary Sabbath school presented to you by the Lusaka Central Seventh day Adventist Church. And today we have a powerful team, a powerful group, a powerful missionary group called The Impact. And we are going to enjoy this wonderful, powerful Sabbath school. And in opening, I'm going to invite Brother George Chiasa to come and give us the opening prayer. We close our eyes as we pray. Our dear Savior and our Father in heaven, we thank you for yet another day to worship you and a day to, to glorify your name. We pray, Father, that we may be invited to your holy seat, that we may learn of your ways and also that we may be reminded of our, our mission here on earth. We pray that you may be in our hearts and let your holy scripture and your holy word search within us the things that we need to let go in order to grab you and also to to know your ways. We ask that every presenter that is here may bring forth your word and Lord that every listener that is out there may be ready to learn and also to implement everything that is shared at this place. We ask all this with thanksgiving in our hearts. To your son Jesus Christ. Amen. That was powerful, George. God bless you. Thank you for that powerful prayer. Um, I want to introduce to you the theme for our Sabbath school. The theme is saying, lest we forget. Lest we forget. And our theme text is coming from the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And the Bible is saying, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was said before, before him endured the cross, uh, despising the shame and is set down at the, is set down to the right hand of the throne of God. And to talk more about this theme, I will invite Chimunya Mwinga to come and tell us more about this theme. Why have they chosen this theme as the impact? Because this is a group that is uh, endorsed and uh, embodied with uh, missionary uh, work going out there in the entered area. So we want to hear more about uh, the theme emphasis lest we forget. Uh, good morning, Sabbath School. Hope we're all doing well. The theme is lest we forget. Lest we forget um, symbolizes some sort of memory. Looking back at something. The first thing that comes to my mind when you talk of mission and us looking back of course, are the great martyrs that stood for the word of God. When you read Hebrews chapter 11, that's the chapter before our memory text, starting from verse um, 33 or 32, the Bible beautifully puts out one of the best or my favorite expositions of scripture. In, the, in, in, chapter, in verse 31, it says, in verse 32, sorry, it says, What shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell Gideon of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight, to flight the armies of the aliens. Women who received their dead raised to life again, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain by the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tortured of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in the mountains and in the dens and the curves of the earth. The Bible there talks about the, the martyrs, the people that lived so long ago, and they stood for something. And another time, as I look back, and I'm trying to look back and trying to remember because we are so prone to forget the important figures of history that have built who we are today. I think of um, a story that you find in Great Controversy of a man named Jerome. Jerome was inspired by a man named John Hass, and as he accepted certain truths, 
um, he was being persecuted, and so he was sent to prison, a common story that we all know. He was sent to prison, and then he was asked to recant his faith. At the time, actually, when you read the, the story, it says that being dead was better than going in prison. And when he thought of the horror of going back in prison, we are told that he recanted his faith. And after he recanted his faith, we find that um, he, goes back into his, he goes back into his cell. And we are told that in the solitude of his, of his cell, he remembered how John Huss, who had died before him for the same cause, stood faith. He did not forget, most especially, the divine master Jesus, who was willing to give his life for him. And so he reconsidered the truth, and we are told that he went back and says, I, re I take back my retraction, I'm going to stand for the truth. And we are told that he was bent to death, and when he went to the death door, he went there singing with joy. And when they wanted to burn him at the back, he says, bring it here. I am ready to die. Going back, I, I read of all these people, and my mind is, is, is puzzled to see why were they so determined to stand for the truth. And I find my answer in the next chapter of Hebrews chapter 12, where it says, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Lest, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It is because of this that these men were inspired to do what they, what they did because they had love and care for the world. It is because Jesus saw the joy or the joy of having you in heaven, having me in heaven, that he was willing to endure the cross and the shame and go through all the pain that he went through. And it is this same thing that motivated people like Paul to preach the gospel even in the midst of persecutions, lest we forget. But the world has gotten busy and many of us have forgotten our role in this world to the people around us. These people are willing to die because they found a, goal, a cause greater than them in service to others. The question is, have you found that cause? Have you forgotten your role in this world? Have you forgotten that you are the salt of the world? Have you forgotten that you are the light of the world? You're supposed to shed light to those in darkness. Have you forgotten? And my brief reminder and my appeal is that lest we forget the work which God has entrusted in us, let us always look back to these stories. Let us draw inspiration from Christ himself. Only then can we be of relevance and of service to the world. Thank you. Wow, that was really powerful, Nshemunia. That was really, really powerful. Lest we forget. God has called us to take this gospel to all the world. And we have a powerful cloud of witness. Those people that died, were killed, murdered for the sake of the gospel. What are you doing for this gospel? What is your role? What is your purpose for the gospel? God has called us to participate in this mission. It's not just for the impact. It is for everyone. Everyone is called in the name of Jesus has to take up this mission and you have to be ready to answer and to give the reason of your your, your belief and uh, I want to invite uh, Kasamba to come and give us a mission story even as we are talking about lest we forget Kasamba it's your time happy Sabbath I hope we're having a lovely morning so um, when I'm told of a mission story, it's a bit hard for me to pick one because there's so many stories of things that have happened that I feel like are worth sharing. But um, just for time's sake, I'm going, to, I'm going to basically touch here and there with different stories. So the first one I want to share is, so as impact, we go to different missions, uh, mission fields. So sometimes we go within rural areas within uh, Zambia, and sometimes we go to other countries and whatnot. So we just basically spread out to places where we think the gospel is not reaching. So I've been on a few missions, uh, but some of the outstanding stories for me were, 
So I was, uh, I was on mission this time, and the kids that we used to take care of on mission, so th those were local kids. And then there was one boy, his name was Bobby, and he was so, so naughty. Um, he was always fighting, or he got the friend's pencil, like always just doing something that, that would just annoy us, the teachers. But then since you're on mission, you have to act humble and be nice to the kids regardless. So, but then one day, um, another kid came to join the group, and he was also really, really naughty. And for him, he was a bit older. His name was Charles, and he was always fighting and all these things. But then, even when he would want to participate in class, the friends would always go like, ah, or maybe they would laugh or be like, no, Charles, somebody else to say, someone who's serious. But then one day I just pointed at him. I'm like, Charles, give us your answer. And uh, he was like, me? And he was really surprised that I actually pointed at him. I'm like, yeah, you give us the answer. Then he says, uh, I don't know. And then everybody laughs. Then at, at the end of the session, I called them. So like, as I was trying to get an understanding of where they come from, I'm like, where do you come from? Where's your mom? Who's your mom? Who do you stay with and whatnot? So I realized, number one, for Bobby, he, he actually had, um, his parents died, um, and then his mom was married to another man who happened to be stepdad now. Then the stepdad uh, got him, stayed with him, and then ran away from him and left him with a very old grandma who cannot even fend for herself. So he goes out and looks for food. So sometimes he actually used to steal food and take food for the grandma. And then for Charles, the, um, his, his mom uh, died and his dad died as well. But then where he was staying, he was staying with uh, an uncle of his. But then they would usually very abuse him and then he would be beaten. He would show, he showed us straps at the back. So he wouldn't sleep home. So he would be away from home for even two weeks because he was scared of going back home. And what I realized with all these experiences, like these kids were actually broken. That's why they were behaving this way. Um, and from then, like how I looked at every other child basically changed. And then another girl that uh, was very outstanding for me, this one was a bit older. Uh, it was in a school. So I was on a mission and I was staying in a school. And she always came to knock at our room. <laughs> so my partner and I used to get irritated, like, why is she always here? So for that mission, it was a bit longer. I think I stayed in that mission field for about eight months. So she'd come and knock, and then want to sit down in our room. She'd be like, can I sweep your room for you? Can I? So for me, I just felt like she was trying to have some of the good things that I had or whatnot. But then with time, I began to warm up to her. And not until the week that we were about to leave, after eight months, she comes up to, uh, to me and my partner, and then she's crying. So I'm like, what is it? She's like, I don't know what's going to happen when you go. So I'm asking her, like, what's wrong? Why, why are you saying that? And she says, look, my father died when my mother was pregnant, and my mother my mother actually um, died when she was giving birth to me. I moved in with my sister and her husband. The husband ran mad. My sister got ill and died. And then so I ended up moving in with my auntie right now where I'm staying. And that auntie she's staying with was married. And while we were still on mission, her uncle died. So she says, whoever I live with eventually dies. And I feel like whoever I get close to, I, get, I feel a bit nervous to get too close to them because I'm scared that they're going to die because I feel like I'm the bad luck. Um, in my family members' lives. And she says, you guys have been a mother. I have never known a mother, but you guys have been a mother since you got here. And like for me, why these mission stories were a bit outstanding for me is not, not what I was able to offer to the people that were in need, but what God was able to do for me. Lest we forget as well, um, when God calls you to service, it is not because he needs somebody in that person's life. That might be a reason. But God also calls us to service so that he can reach out to us. How I viewed both the children and the other lady was very different. But on top of that, it made me more grateful for what I have. Number two, it, helped, it made me a bit more patient when dealing with people. And that's, that's something that I'm learning um, in my day-to-day -day life, that people are hurt and we do not know it. So like even as we are dealing with them, let us be gentle and all these things. So like that's, that's, that for me, that was God speaking to me. And he's called us so many times. There's a verse that I really love in Acts chapter 17, verse 26 and 27. It says, And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the vessels of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. So it's like, look, God has determined that you're going to be in that location. God has determined that you're going to be in this time. He has he knows who your family members are going to be, and he has put you there so that you will seek after him. And says, and after you seek after him, you're going to find him because he's not far from you. So as impact, we have a mission coming up this December to Mbala. It's going to be running from the 20th of December to the 3rd of January. Registration is now on. Uh, payments are being made. 
God is calling you to go to service, but not just to service to help others, but go to service because you will get to interact with God yourself. And even as we're going on this mission, um, others are not able to go, others are not able to assist. We are receiving both uh, those who are able to come physically and those who would like to sponsor a missionary who is not able to go. Um, so for those that, um, that would like to participate and you don't know how to go about it, um, you can call us on 972-581331. 972-581331. And let us go in the mission field, reach out, interact with God, and also help uh, take Jesus to other people. Amen. Really power of Kasamba. Thank you for the experience. If you want to see the power of God, please try to go on these missions. I've, I've, I've gone in this mission for, for quite uh, uh, many times and I've seen what God can do. If you want to see that God can work even in you, try it. You can just call on the same number or even the number that is running on the thing, you can call if you want to be part of this mission. You know that this December you're not doing anything, you have a free time. This is your time to experience what God can work through you and this is the time you need to participate. God bless you. That was um, what we had for you for today. May God bless you and enjoy the rest of the program. Please don't go away because the study, Sabbath School Bible study is coming for you. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Thank you.